we've assembled the smartest minds in the industry. And developed the market's most efficient technology and software. We're changing the way the world moves by electrifying transport on land and sea. More power, less fuel, cleaner air. Be a part of the electrification revolution. Hello, SLAS 2017. So, my name is Kim Rauma. I'm a co-founder and, uh, and CEO Visitor. Visitor means a person that is working for a company, Visedo, and has a superpowers. Superpower, and uh, it's coming from the company that you can end the pollution. I was asked to speak to you about how to change or how to create a business model which is changing the methods of, uh, of coming into the traditional industries. And for Visedo, it's more, more than, uh, than a truth because our main competitors are companies like uh, Yaskava, Mitsubishi, ABB, Siemens. So you need to create something really, really different to be inside of this industry. So I decided to give three main examples or three main points what to do and where to start to do this and make it happen. So the first one is that you have to be on a mission. You really want to know what you want to do and what you want to change. So it is not enough if you are asking yourself that what is your company mission? You need to be yourself on that mission. You need to want to change it from your heart to really change it for the future. So for us, for Visedo and all the people working for us or being partners with us, it is ending the pollution with electrification. So it is not every day that you get to have a nice warm up to the speech as uh, today I had a uh, head of uh, Nissan talking about this area, but he was talking mostly about the personal cars. And uh, there is such much more than the personal cars that is actually creating the air pollution in, in, in uh, our areas. Electric car or car is 90% is on the yard. Its lifetime totally is 6,000 hours compared to the other machines. So here are a few examples what we have electrified in uh, globally. So you can see there that the electric car on the right hand side, up, it's only one example. It's only little in use. It's creating not so much on the total picture. If you take the marine industry, for example, only the 15 biggest marine vessels give as much sulfur pollution to the air as all the cars globally. Only 15 of the biggest vessels. So if you want to concentrate on something to create the effect, those are the machines which are used every day, which lifetimes are 100,000 hours, 50,000 hours, and uh, electric car, as I said, it's 6,000 hours. The transportation, the buses, the trucks, is, cr is causing 30% of our air pollution globally. Every day, there is 200,000 people moving to cities. These people are not the ones that have a car or money to buy a car. There is no country that can build metros to transport these people. It's only the ones 
that are using usually buses. So it's not possible that we just increase the amount of diesel basic traditional ones to the traffic. Well, these are just a few examples what we have changed. So, first of all, you have to be on the mission. For us, it is ending the pollution. And then it cannot be that what is the company mission, you need to do it. So, the second point, are you in a mega trend? So, Elon Musk was yesterday in the news and he said that uh, he, has, is go he is going to put uh, human brains together with the computer with the neuron drink link. Well, I can tell him that I already tried it last year, as you can see it in the picture, but uh, I didn't like it. I liked my engineer buddy more, so, so now I'm back to myself. But you need to put your company in a mega trend in this business. So if you are going to the traditional industry, you need to see that there is a big change. For our part, the buses, the mobile work machines, it is that there is the biggest change of that industry ever happening, and that's the electrification. All those machines are based on the diesel engine and hydraulics. And now they are going to be electrified. It is the ever biggest change in that industry. So in your industry, if you want to go to the traditional industry, you need to be sure that there is some of the global megatrends that is affecting there before you go. So for us, urbanization, air pollution, energy balance, all of those megatrends are happening. If you look at that picture, you see a city and, and and uh, if you think about the pollution amount of that, for example, if you take the world's most polluted cities like New Delhi, Mexico City, Cairo, Beijing, it means that when you are born there as a child, you are burning, the c children who are living there are burning six cigarettes per day by only living on that city. Is that the right? Can we do something for that? Yeah, of course we can. So, as I told you, this is a picture of city. This is actually from Hong Kong. 30% of Hong Kong air pollution is coming from the marine vessels in the harbor. 30% pro it's a huge amount so please change the slide thank you so one example of uh, of what we have been doing at we are in asia we said that it the first hybrid electric ferry in Asia. It is in Taiwan, in the Kaohsiung Harbor. The Kaohsiung Harbor is the most polluted harbor in Taiwan. It's one of the most polluted in the Asia. The ferry is called Ferry Happiness. It was not so happy before we made it a little bit happier, as you can see from the from the nice teddy bear with the nice trousers in, uh, in, uh, in the deck. So, but what we can do and what we did, it's already in the operation for, for quite a long time. By changing it, it's still using the diesel engines, but just changing it to be electrified, so that it uses electric propulsion, we could reduce half of the emission it's giving we reduced half of the operation cost, so the payback time for the investment is less than two years for the owner, and it's safe and silent in operation. This ferry, even it looks quite small, it's transporting eight million people per year in that harbor. Eight million people. So, by this kind of work, 
you can really change something and still to make it profitable. So, the third point, are you disruptive? You can see there a guy who invented the electrification. Well, it's not from the history book, even it looks so. But the electrification is the end game. And my question more or less is that what you see here? Most of you see a nice piece of engineering work. I see your engineering work from uh, last century. Do you know how many moving parts does a uh, diesel engine or gasoline engine has or have? It has uh, nearly 10,000 moving parts with the gearbox. 10,000 moving parts. Electric motor is the simplest thing that engineer can design. It has only one moving part, the rotor. If you simplify electric motor, it will become as a rock. So there is nothing more simple than an electric motor which you can use to move something. And what you need to maintenance is only the mechanically moving parts. And if you have uh, 10,000 moving parts compared, if we take an example Tesla car, it has about 150 moving parts compared to the plus 10,000 in a standard diesel engine car. Well, there is nearly nothing to maintenance. So everything comes much cheaper and car is still quite simple compared to the ferry. And all of that is adding to the outcome. But the question is that is the electrification the disruption of this industry? Is Visedo able to enter to the market and, and take the marketplace from ABB, from Yaska, from Mitsubishi, all the others, because there is uh, electrification ongoing? The answer is that no, that's not disruptive. It's the reason that there is a market. That's creating the market. This is the biggest thing that usually startups think that their disruption is that it's the market. But that's not the disruptive what you are doing in your industry. It's the technology and the technology trend change which is creating the market. But still you need to do something differently to be disruptive on your area. So, how we are disrupting this? Now we already know that the, the mechanically moving parts to diesel engines are going out. Well, this is how Visedo is disrupting the business model. In the left hand side, you can see the industry standard. It's mechanics. The whole industry is selling mechanics because it's coming from the 90s, it's coming from the 80s, where everything, there was not yet software there, and all the customers were taught, and there is to buy me mechanics. And then you have, well, hundreds of different products, even if you took them apart, everything, every one of these have the same IGPD and same control digital electronics inside. So what we did, we did only single box single box which can create all of the products which ABB, Siemens, everyone else have hundreds of products. And with that one box, that single box, we create by using only software, all of that. We call it also a universal maintenance box because if you have a ferry, if you have a big cruising vessel, you have about two to three hundred different kind of those modules inside that. Two to three hundred and most of them are different and every one of them needs to have a maintenance part. So the whole logistics, the whole maintenance chain become a really, really difficult. But with our stuff, you just buy one universal maintenance box, which is a box without the software. You put it on the vessel 
and then if something is broken, you put it there, and by software, you make it to be what it needs to be. So there is no need to have big warehouses, big service centers, all of that. This is disruptive business model for your industry, which is something traditional. Many of you think that uh, Tesla was disruptive because they make the electric car. That's not true, because everyone can make an electric car. That's not their own thing. The disruptive thing for, for what Elon Musk did was that they don't have the real sales of the car or the sales big glass igloos all around the cities. They sell directly from the factory to the consumer. That's the disruptive method for that industry, not the technology. So when you are doing your company, remember to know that you need to have a disruptive issue on there. And it's not the technology or the business which is coming to the market. This is a big difference on there. So, the last point. You see me as a superhero there. You see me in the many pictures. But for all of us, it's the team. The only the team and the people working in the company mean something. And all of them need to be on that same mission. If you are in the traditional industry, you need to focus, you need to get the people to work to the same mission because they need to work hard and you need to create the models that you get inside to these industries. So, at the end, you have the full company. This is only thing about what you need for company to present it to the investors, to anyone. You need to have a mission where you are working. So we are ending pollution. You need to have a vision. So we are the knowledge leader of electrification. We make the iron clever. We don't make the iron. We are the brain center of electrification. Then the team can make you to have the promise to the customers. We are promising to the customer the highest efficiency and energy savings in their application, whatever it is. That's a bold, but that you need to remember. If you get the bold promise, you need to deliver it. And then comes the values, why the people are working together. So this is all together, everything that is in one company and what you need to have. So, Visedo is about inside of electrification. You remember the three main things. You need to have the team, you need to be on a mission, and the most important, you need to, not, you need to remember that you need to have a disruptive method, and it is not why the market existing. It's why you can change that market compared to the traditional industries. So, this was Visedo. And I'm Kim Rauma. With more questions, I'm there in the cafe after this. Thank you.